Hello, I'm Scott with Sean's Photography, and today we're going to talk about making a mold using Mesh Mixer if you do not have ZBrush. So let's go through our steps here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to import our item. So today we're going to take a standard head with small soldiers, chip hazard. We're going to wait for it to load. Alright, now we've got it loaded. We're going to check our polys. See how many polys we have on this thing. So we're going to go to our wire frame here in a second and uh, take a look. Alright, so that's a lot of polys. So the box that we're going to make is going to have to equal kind of the polys that we're showing from this head. So we're going to go over here to our primitives. We're going to bring out a box. We're going to slide it over. And we're going to kind of center that head inside this box. So you can kind of see the center line of where the center of this box is through the gizmo. So I'm going to line the blue line up with the arrow up with the nose. Now I'm going to increase the size a little bit. Now I can't see the inside, so we're going to change the um, shade to invisible so I can kind of see orientate it to get it in the center as best I can all right everything's kind of looking good checking over all the edges just making sure that it's all good all right now we're going to change our shader again over to gray or default and we're going to go in here and look at our wireframe of this box now we're going to actually remesh it and give it more polys to match the detail of the head if we don't do this and we go to the next step what it's going to do is it's going to get all jaggedy and and it's going to be low poly and it's going to look really really bad so we're trying to match the polys of the head. It don't have to be exact. We're just trying to get more polys into the box to give it so it can capture more detail. It's kind of like resolution. We've got to increase the resolution of the box to capture the resolution of the head. So we we'll go through this step a few times. Uh, mess mixer, we can actually just, or I mean ZBrush, I can actually just use one slider and do this exact same thing in one step instead of having to go through all these. So once that's done, we can turn off our wireframe because we don't need to look at it no more. Now we're going to go to plane cut. So we're going to cut this box in half. We're going to hit apply. Whoops. I think I made a mistake due to the fact that uh, I didn't hit keep both sides. So let's go back a step. Go back another step. All right. Let's switch this to both sides. That way we're keeping both sides of the box. Now let's split the shell or separate it. So now we have two boxes cut exactly in half. So what we're going to do is now we're going to duplicate this head because we're going to need a duplication. So we can use this button or we can go over to the edit and hit duplicate. All right, now it's generating a duplicate of the head. So now we'll need one for each side of the box. So now we're going to select the box and select the head. And then we're going to hit difference. So what it's going to do is going to take the head, cut it out of the inside of the box. So due to the amount of the polys, if it was lower polys, this step would go a lot faster. Due to the fact that it's higher polys, it's going to take a little bit longer. Alright, we want to click this little button, auto reduce. We don't want... To, to auto reduce anything because we don't want any lower pixels in the item we want the higher pixels we want to keep the higher pixels or the higher polys 
so we click on that button so that way we can keep the high polys and it's not trying to regenerate polys and causing really ugly lines we just we just don't want that all right so now this is going to take a few seconds and we're going to be done on this side and then we're going to go to the opposite side all right so now this side's done let's go to the opposite side and do the exact same thing so we're going to select the box then select the head and hit difference if you do it the other way it's going to cut the far or part of the face off when you hit the difference button now you can hit the click them by holding the shift key or you can go over to the browser menu there and we can or object browser and click one and click as long as you're holding the shift key selects both of them but again select the one that you want to keep and not the one you want to get rid of first all right now we got to go over here and hit our auto reduce results we want to click that off It'd be nice if it set that you could actually set that in the preferences so you don't have to keep doing that but again it's a free program and it would again this is a great program for any beginner or anybody who wants to do some quick editing uh, this is what I started off with again I use ZBrush now but this was a beginner and would, if they would have kept updating it and kept reproduce or making better copies this would be an ultimate program but again there's no more support to this program but it's free and that's a great thing all right now we've got our box made with our two negatives inside now we're gonna have to make some keys uh, the keys are what's gonna align the two pieces together when you put them together so we're gonna have to make the keys We're going to go over here to our primitives again. We're going to bring out a circle. You can use a square. You can use a triangle. You can do whatever you want. I'm just going to use basic circles here or basic spheres. Um, set that one. Then I'm going to duplicate it. And then I'm going to increase the size. Because again, when you're making something that's going to fit together, <coughs> You want to make sure that um, one's just a little bit bigger because if they're the exact same size, they will not slide together. So we're going to transform this, make it just a little bit bigger. And we're going to select both of those and duplicate them and then just move them all out throughout the front plate of this. Now, a few minutes ago, a few seconds ago, you saw me actually hit the shift key or the space key to get rid of uh, face groups so I don't see the colors in the face groups on the screen. Uh, sometimes it's great to work in face groups and then sometimes you don't want to see the different colors in the face groups on, the, on your object. And so to make it easier, I took the face groups off. shrink this one down a little bit and we'll duplicate it and put it on one on the other side all right now that we've got that done we're going to select all the top ones those are our larger ones and we're just group them combine them shut that off and then we'll go and select all the smaller ones and we're we'll combine or slash group those together. And then we're gonna take our back box. 
and we're in a well I guess looks like I'm changing colors here <laughs> so I know it's winter which I guess um, all right, so we select the box. We're going to select the small circles, and we're going to join those together. So it doesn't make a difference which one you select first on that one. It's going to join together and give you whatever it is. But when you're subtracting something from something, you always want to select the what you want to keep first and then the secondary item that's going to be cut out of the object. This one, you can go either way. So on the opposite side, we have to go and select the box first and then hit the click the circles or spheres to remove them because if we don't, then what it's going to do is it's going to cut the sphere in half. Now that we've got this done, we've got a box. Again, I'm going to take and take off the auto reduce thing because I want my circles to be kind of perfect. I'm going to pop up with a little error here in a second and we'll just fix that real quick. It's not going to really show in the final product if you were going to actually make this, but because again, it's only right there in the connection point so we'll just fix that real quick and now basically we're ready to sit there and uh, export these out and make a mold um, and print them out and then we can basically take slap those two together after you're completely done and uh start casting again you're going to want since this is a solid item i mean it's a rigid mold you're going to want to cast something that is flexible in it so like a urethane or something like that if you're casting resin into this it's just not going to work because you're going to too many undercuts and it's going to get trapped in the mold and it's not going to come out but if you use a, a rubber urethane like uh, Flex 10, Flex 40, Flex 90, um, any of those from um, different companies. I mean, they come under different names, but it's a urethane rubber, and you can cast in these. 